hello there welcome to the video in the last one we had seen how exactly we can create some channels using constants inside nuke but this time I'm going to take that step a bit further we are going to use what we call roto shapes to create our own custom masks or mats inside of nuke and put them in our own channels so that they could be used uh, for color corrections or keying or anything as such so let's get into nuke and get started on that okay so we are inside nuke right now and what I want to do is basically instead of creating a channel which has purely flat information I want to create channel which has like let's say shapes inside it to create this the node I would use is under draw and there are two main nodes to we can use one is a roto and another is roto paint I don't want to go into roto paint uh, right now itself because it's a bit more advanced I'll just go to roto to just show the basics so as soon as I create this node you can see there is a tile and I'll just connect it to my viewer as you already know uh, the accent key or the title key on the keyboard opens up the viewer now I have the viewer open and I have the roto paint properties open on the side uh, to work with roto paint all you have to remember is that it works very similar to how you have the pen tool in Photoshop Illustrator or Coral Draw so you just create a shape and fill it with a particular color but only uh, advantage in Nuke is after you have filled it with a particular color you can tell which channel set that belongs to so it's as simple as that and also it uh, helps you creating layers grouping layers and such so let's see how exactly you can start get started here so the major tools are available right here in the viewport when uh, you have the roto paint tool selected or its properties open so if I close the properties the tools are gone all you need to do is double click on the roto paint open the properties and all the tools are back so uh, there are a couple of ways of creating the shapes all the uh, shape uh, options are available here at the bottom you have the Bezier, B spline, ellipse and rectangle as a default the actual roto paint node gives you more options but these are more sufficient for us right now so taking the Bezier tool I'll just drag out some shape and as soon as I close this shape now you can see it gets filled with a particular color so the main things I want you to note now first step I created this and it filled it with a certain color and here it created this Bezier 1 node under the root directory and right now it's telling me that it's visible and it has uh, basically this is the outline color and this is the inside color this does not get rendered but this one does this is the actual color which is being filled inside this I can click on it open up the color swatch and pick any color I want so basically I can fill in the roto shape with any color I choose so let's say I've created this shape and I don't want it to be in the RGBA channels but I want it to be in something else like let's say I want it to be just a mask which I use for some color corrections or tell that I want a particular image being edited in this section if you have seen all the videos I was talking about creating mat or channel for a guy who's standing in front of a background and do only color corrections on him so what I've created here is a simple shape which I want to color correct and so I want it in a particular channel where I can use it from so to add it into the channel in under properties the first option is the output I'll just open up the output and by default new gives me a certain uh, uh, mask option so here I have roto paint mask I'll just add the output of this entire roto paint node into that output and immediately you can see the fill is gone next uh, the fill is gone but you can still see the outline is left out and this is because the properties is open you can just click on the downward uh, facing arrow over here to collapse the properties and the shape will be gone the, this is only a convention in nuke where if the properties are open the object will be seen or any object related to it will be seen so let's say I've created this one shape I want to create a couple of more shapes so I'll actually go ahead and create a few okay again the Bezier tool so as you can see I've created a couple of shapes right now and here the Bezier have populated as I create more shapes they keep go falling on top of each other now 
I've created them but uh, let's say you have uh, created a lot of roto shapes to isolate many parts of your scene. It will become quite tedious to actually isolate different sections or know which one belongs to which part of the scene. So to help you with that what you can do is this section which is there before your actual fill color you can click on to this and give any color you want. I'm just right clicking in the color wheel and increasing the brightness. So I can give in any color I want and you can, as you can see the outline gets that particular color. So I can pick any color for this, any color for that and again any color for this. So as easily I can start differentiating between different roto shapes but as you can see this entire thing is being outputted into a roto paint mask and it has a single channel. So if I go into Roto Paint Mask over here, because it has single channel, everything is merged into a single channel itself. I don't basically have any other options. So having a single channel here is not working out for me. So I'll go in, I'll create a new channel set and okay let it be layer 1 itself. I'll just put in RGBA, the default. You already know how to create the different ones. So I've created a channel set, I'll put red, green and blue inside it right now it's not being displayed here because I'm looking at the wrong channel set I need to go to the layer 1 channel set and here you can easily see the difference now let's say I wanted to isolate the different sections of the entire scene what I would do is I would actually go add in different colors so Bezier 1 I'll give it a particular color like a perfect red and the second one I'll give it a green and I want it to be a perfect green no halfway greens so again I want a blue okay so I have perfect red green and blue which has been put into this okay I have given the different colors but what exactly is the use of it the red mask uh, red color rotor which I have drawn is actually being covered by the green and blue uh, so actually let me do something extra I'll just take the blue one and I'll let it cover the green one on top so basically there is some information in the red channel which is being hidden by the blue and there is some information in the green which is hidden by the blue and basically green is also hiding the red but I want to be able to edit each one of these sections separately so for that reason I can select any one of these I can go to the shape section and over here you can see the source is actually the color this is telling me what exactly is going to give in the value in the channels so I can change it to whatever I want now let's say I have the blend mode which is set to over over basically means that it's going to s sit on top of another like for example basic layers in Photoshop so here Bezier 2 is sitting on top of Bezier 1 Bezier 3 is sitting on top of Bezier 2 but instead I can start changing the blend modes here I'm going to use the blend mode called plus as soon as I add it into plus you can see there is a difference where green and red meet I have a different color and that is uh, yellow and because it is yellow now it has both the channel information of red and green as it is the combination of both the colors I'll go into blue now and I'll again do the same thing I'll put it in plus and as you can see where all three of them meet I have white where only red is there there is red and so on so you can basically see all the primary colors working out there so now I have created different shapes I've assigned particular colors to them and I've changed the blend modes for each shape so that they're adding on top of each other so that no information is actually being lost in the end so now if I actually come to the red channel and check that you can see the entire red channel is there let me just close out the property so you can see it without the outlines so you can see only the red channel is here and now if I go to the green you can see only the green channel and blue only the blue channel without any uh, channel interfering with anything else so this is one of the easiest ways of creating multiple mats to work with if you are coming in from uh, Maya creating RGB or ID mats or whatever you want to call it uh, this is basically how you would want to create it so that overlaying colors will not affect each other and they give you the best output whereas when you're rendering out of the 3d package the LUT usually gets screwed up so if you're creating things like this inside of nuke it's going to work out a lot better rather than in a 3d package so 
okay pretty much that's the only thing I wanted to discuss in this video so what we have done is in the previous session we created the same channels but we created flat channels throughout in the entire frame but this time we use the roto node to actually output into a new channel set but create the same R G and B output we combine the Bezier's together so that they are not interfering with each other and giving us a final output which can easily be used to do color corrections compositing or anything which we want so I hope you understood this video I'll be discussing more upon channels and manipulating channels in the next one so I'll see you there